First off is firewalls. A lot of, uh, especially Windows installations, have personal firewalls, or this could also be something like a Cisco security agent, something on your local device that's going to stop you from launching or using SDM to its full potential. You could turn off your firewall, not really recommended, or create an exception. Either way, this would be the first thing I would look at if I can't create a connection to my router. Use your basic troubleshooting. If you could ping the router and you've also probably at this point configured the router you know, via your terminal emulator from the same device, then it probably is a, a firewall issue. Next up is browser, and I touched on this briefly in the earlier slide. SDM will launch in your default browser, uh, and a lot of us are not using Internet Explorer as our default browser. Now, my caveat was that I had experienced issues with uh, Firefox in the past not being able to run everything on SDM. That may not be the case anymore. Again, your mileage may vary. But there's nothing in SDM that I could find that will let you specify a different browser. So if your default browser is, you know, Firefox, then it's going to launch in that browser. With Firefox, there is a, a workaround. Um, there's a plugin called IE View. You install that in Firefox, and what you do is you specify that uh, certain programs, when they launch, to go ahead and transfer them over to Internet Explorer. So that's what I'm using to get around this. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. You might have no problem with uh, Firefox, but just keep in mind that if you need to run Internet Explorer to unlock the full potential of SDM, SDM will launch into your default browser, so you're going to have to work that out on your own. Which brings me to Java. I detest Java. For those that don't know, Java is a platform agnostic language whose motto is write once, debug everywhere. Also, it was created by Satan. Uh, Cisco seems to love Java for whatever reason. They use it for Cisco Works and uh, Wilsi and Wism and for SDM, obviously. Uh, I had a problem with SDM not working for certain sections, and I think it was like IPS, firewall, stuff like that, maybe Natty. I can't remember. Um, I had worked out all my browser issues, my firewall issue. It worked on a different PC, but didn't work on the PC I was using well. I had an up-to-date JRE uh, 1.6, I believe, or something like that. And when I rolled that JRE back, which is Java Runtime Environment, to like 1.4, whatever was listed in the Cisco documentation for SDM, it fixed those issues. So just know that if you're having some issues, you might want to look at your version of Java and possibly roll it back and see if that fixes the issue. Uh, like I said earlier, you're playing with Windows, Java, and Internet Explorer. There's going to be a ton of stuff getting in your way. Finally, the last one is just pop-ups. Uh, SDM loves pop-ups, so you're going to want to set up your pop-up blocker to allow pop-ups from SDM. Usually, you can do this on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the one thing, though, is that because SDM uses Java, a lot of times, like an applet will come up. Something that won't show up as, in this case I'm using Internet Explorer, an Internet Explorer window. And if you have multiple windows open, sometimes those applets get lost in the shuffle. They'll, they'll get behind a window or whatever, and you won't see it in your taskbar. So you'll just be stuck going, why the hell am I not authenticating? Why am I not getting in here? And what's actually going on is that you've buried one of these applets back there that need you to click on it and say, yes, I accept the certificate or give another login for whatever reason. Just keep that in mind. Watch your pop-up blocker. And watch out for like these applets getting buried behind your windows. Okay, let's get rolling here. So this is going to be the first window you're going to see after you launch SDM from your PC. It's going to tell you application will open on another window so you can close this. But it will give you some important information. The most important piece of information is Java enabled. See, if it says disabled there, you're going to have a hell of a time running this. And this will be the first of your many pop-ups that are created by SDM. This is where you're going to give the username and passwords for that account that we created with uh, Privilege Level 15. It will tell you that you need at least uh, Level 15. And it warns you that your username and password might be sent in an insecure manner. Uh, if you're using HTTPS, that shouldn't be the case. And actually, you know, I ran a packet capture on this. I was not able to capture the username password. So it might have some ability to encrypt or otherwise protect that password. Or it could simply be the case that my uh, Wireshark skills aren't as sharp as I think they are. Uh, anywho, moving on. So these are some of the pop-ups that you're going to see and or may not see depending on your Java version. When I was running the newer version of Java, I did not get uh, especially the uh, certificate pop-ups. 
and these are applets. I believe that if I remember way back to my Java programming course in college that the question mark identifies as an applet. I'm not sure. <laughs> I could be full of shit and probably am. But anyways, watch out for these guys because they can get buried behind Windows, but you may have to um, re-enter that authentication. You might have to say, yeah, go ahead and accept this certificate to move forward in the SDM application lawn. And then you'll get to this window where SDM is actually loading the configuration. And this can take a little while, so be patient you'll see this blue bar fill up but you know especially the first time you do this it's gonna take a while because it's pulling over the routers configuration and some other files and then finally when you get this thing up and running here's what you're gonna see and in this lesson we're not gonna go through using SDM we're just wanting you to get it installed and up and running that's gonna be in a different lesson but this is the screen that you should see when everything has loaded successfully and I'm gonna blaze through these two this is just gonna be showing you installing and running SDM on the router so as I mentioned earlier, you're going to actually be moving these SDM files so that the software is running from the router. You will need to put in that additional two lines of configuration where you're going to be allowing users on your VTUI line to log in locally and they'll be able to access that level 15 account. Unfortunately, to get the files out to the Cisco router, you're going to have to run the SDM installer again. So you download the SDM software from Cisco, then you'll unzip it to a folder in that folder there's going to be an icon called setup and that's how you install it on your PC. In this case we're going to do that double click on setup but instead of um, configuring on this computer we're going to do it on Cisco router which is the second choice. So you'll click install on router and then you'll have to put in your the host name or IP address of the router and then give your username password and HTTP should be already turned on. So once you click enter you're going to be connecting to the router. Please wait and that's what you'll do. If there's a problem connecting to the router or with your credentials, you're going to see this pop up and it's going to say unable to connect to the router. This can be any of the things that they have listed here. The one thing that I saw this happen with was that when I had not set up that login local under my VTY lines, this would happen because it, it's going to initially come in there and do some configuration before it starts talking to your router via HTTP. So it's going in there via the VTY line and it's going to um, make two changes, two pretty big changes. It's going to add SSH to your router and it's going to enable the HTTPS server. So then once this is all set up and it's communicated with your router, done that little configuration, it's going to start asking you how you want to have this installed. I do like at this point choosing custom because it's going to give you the ability to pick and choose what you want to put on there. And there's not a whole lot that you get choices over. But the big thing is it's going to show you the available memory and how much memory these files are going to take. So you can see here that, uh, well, it's not really that impressive on the slide. Initially, nothing would be selected here. So as you select these software packages, what it'll do is it'll it'll show you what the available space is. In this case, it looks like we got like 12 megs available. And then as you click like SDM here, I think that takes like takes over 8 megs or maybe just under 8 megs. Can't remember. And then if you click, you know other options it will increase the, the space required and you'll be able to, to do a stare and compare and see that you're good to go so I think that SDM Express you can probably live without where you might want to use that is if your um, available flash is insufficient I think actually this takes over 8 megs we'll see it in action anyway so if you don't have the available space for the full SDM you might want to do the SDM Express alright nothing exciting here you get to choose if you want to go forward or cancel and if you do decide to go forward it's going to install files on your router and this can take a while but you'll have the uh, bar and tell you exactly what it's doing so once it's done with that step when it's moved these files over you can look on your router and see what's been added here I did a uh, directory basically showing the directory of the flash and everything that's in red here is what it's added so it added this home this SDM config home tar 128 meg that's the uh, IPS signature files uh, some other stuff on here but there's SDM tar that's the big one so you can see that's what is that that's six megs um, anywho so you can see that it actually has moved these files to your router a lot of the newer Cisco platforms might come with these files already installed I think some versions of iOS actually install these but I'm not hundred percent sure so if these files are already present then all you have to do is prepare your router you know with the setting up your HTTPS or HTTP server blah 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 those steps we specified earlier and you're good to go you can just paste in the IP address into a browser and you'll be good to go